I am so excited to be doing this vlog and to be reading this book. So if you're new here, I love Cora Riley's Mafia universe, like ride or die Mafia universe for me, especially I love the Kamora Chronicles. That's definitely my favorite. However, Luca just reigns supreme for me in general for all the Mafia men. And Cora Riley last week, or well, I don't know when this is going up recently released the next generation the first book of the next generation sins of the father which is the new series and by sin i rise is the first release of it and this is luca and aria's daughter's story uh the dude i think is from a rival motorcycle club i'm so fucking excited so i originally already filmed this intro earlier this week when it first came out because it was my understanding that it was going to be on kindle unlimited because i'm pretty sure all of the books are because i read most of them on kindle unlimited until I realized I liked them and then bought them all on paperback and I got on there on release day it's not on Kindle Unlimited and I'm like well I don't want to spend money on the ebook knowing that I'm going to buy the paperback at some point but I just have not gotten around to buying the paperback yet and was just kind of putting it off because I'm like you know what I do really want to read it right now but I got book mail from Sonia again this literally made my whole day I have not been feeling too hot today I think I'm still just like catching up on sleep and stuff and just I've just been kind of out of it all day and when I opened this I <laughs> I can't express the joy that this brought my heart Sonia seriously thank you so 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 much for this and also for the other books that you sent because I was ready to start sicko this weekend but now mm -mm -mm, we're starting this first because I need I need this I need this in my life right now it's fairly short it's like 250 pages and I don't think I realized that this is only part one of their story we're gonna see I literally have not seen any reviews about this I've purposely avoided them all like I know Jen from book refuge has uh, a vlog up already and like a review and hers was no spoilers but I still don't want to know like anything about it so I haven't watched that yet and I know Mary from More to Mary also posted hers and again have not watched it I don't want to know their thoughts I don't want to know anyone's thoughts I want to go in completely blind and I'm just I'm so excited let's dive in also this cover this is a gorgeous cover I don't necessarily love people covers this cover though stunning the dude in this super hot and also I just like the font so very exciting. I do actually like these better than the Kamora Chronicle covers. I don't love those, especially Twisted Loyalties and Twisted Bonds and Twisted Craving. Oh, and Twisted Hearts. Okay, literally, I think the only one out of the Kamora Chronicles that I like is Twisted Pride that's Serafina and Remo's book. That cover is stunning. Does anyone else feel like they read paperbacks slower than they read ebooks? Because I feel like I've been reading for a while and I'm only on page 59. I'm liking it so far. Two notes. I like that Marcella is more like Luca than the traditional woman in Cora Riley's Mafia books, with the exception of like Serafina and Gianna. Serafina and Gianna, I guess. Like, I like Arya and I liked, um, oh, what's their other sister? Liliana, too. But they were just much more like docile. I don't know, more docile women. And I like the Marcella seems more like Luca because I just, I love Luca. So I'm enjoying her character so far. Maddox, fine, don't really know too much about him yet, but I understand his cause. As for my other note, I've never read a book series before that's like a second generation, except for, I guess, like Fire Night by Penelope Douglas. It's the novella for the Devil's Night series, and that one features the four couples with their various children. So in that, like kind of, but that's literally like what, 50, 60, 70 pages? I don't know, it's short. So it's not very long. You don't get a ton of them like with their kids. Where this, we're seeing like Arya and Luca and I can't help but just remember them and picture them like I did when they were like at the start of Found by Honor, you know? It's just kind of weird. Like I can't picture them as grown ups like with kids, like as parents, I'm still picturing them as like their 20 year old something selves. So I don't know if I like love that. I love seeing them again, but I it's just kind of weird seeing them as parents now. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of get ready for bed here. I'm uh, over halfway. I'm on chapter 14, which I stopped when I turned the page, guys. When I turned the fucking page and saw that Luca is going to be the next point of view 
oh my god, I haven't needed anything more in my life. I just, <laughs> the whole time that it's Marcella and Maddox, I'm just like, I wonder what Luca's doing. And every time Mateo gets mentioned in here, I'm like, oh my God, where's my crazy dude? I just, I need him in my life. I need him right now. I don't know. I have so many conflicted thoughts on this book. So first off, I don't like the dog element at all. Well, I mean, I guess that's a very small thing and it's a nitpicky thing. And it's for me personally, I have said this before and I'll say it again for anyone new here. I don't have any triggers in books uh regarding like people at all or like certain situations like i don't really have a lot of triggers that way my one and only trigger has to do with animal and like animal violence animal death i don't want it anywhere near my books what i'm reading like it, <laughs> it it it's bad for me so i don't like that and i don't like that they have these dogs that they train to fight and we haven't gotten too much of that but i don't even like reading about them in cages not having water to drink, not getting the proper love and attention, and that they're like dogs for fighting. Like, I just don't like that. I don't need it in here. <laughs> Marcella reminds me a bit of Serafina in a way where she's like in a very similar situation and has this backbone. However, Maddox is kind of boring. There's like really nothing to his personality whatsoever, honestly. So he's kind of boring for her banter like Marcella is really the star in this for me I think Maddox is yeah like I said just kind of boring and his name is Mad Dog like his nickname is Mad Dog and so far this dude has done nothing to indicate that nickname like nothing even close he's never been like unleashed pun intended or like lost his cool at all and I'm kind of like can we please have some of that like I want to see like a little Remo or Mateo in him, you know? If, if your nickname is Mad Dog, I wanna see that. And we just haven't yet, so that's kind of disappointing. But I thought that the banter and the tension, even with him being a little boring, it was interesting, you know? Like it was going kind of well. And then she moved up to his room, and then they had they started like engaging in some activities, and then now I just got to the chapter where they had sex. There was no build up into that. There was no like tension built between the two of them. There was no passion. There was no like emotion, like emotional connection. There was just nothing. Like that sex was some of the most boring sex I've ever read in a book, like ever. There was just nothing between them during those scenes. And then after the last one, Maddox is all of a sudden like, I would die for her why dude you've spent a week with her like a week and you have been plotting revenge against her father and like therefore her and their whole family since you were a literal child since you were five years old I just don't buy it I'm like why all of a sudden I get it that you're like starting to like her but when you say that you'll literally die for her I don't even buy it that then it's just like oh he's just a nice person and like he doesn't want to see a woman suffer because he clearly does not care about that I don't buy into this relationship I feel like it's supposed to feel like forbidden and kind of taboo and like star-crossed lovers a bit kind of not really the star-crossed lover one I feel like is going to be Greta and Ammo I'm so excited for that book that book is I'm hoping incredible I'm more liking it because I think I'm so happy to be back in this world with them and because I'm liking Marcella, because she does kind of, at some points, remind me of Luca a bit. But I just think overall it's kind of lacking a bit. And I will say I am just getting kind of bored. I mean, hopefully if we start getting some POV chapters outside of the compound. But so far we are only in the compound. And we don't even see Maddox's point of view when he's off of the compound. Whenever we get a point of view chapter from him, we're back at the compound with the uncle or which his name is Earl and then his son is Gray. So I'm like, Earl Gray T, anyone? I don't know. That's a whole different thing. There was a comment made I think it was in Maddox's point of view talking about Marcella and how like he was trying she's trying to like weed out who's important to him and that she realized like that Gray was important to him his half brother what would have indicated that so far wow my voice just cracked there but honestly like what would have indicated that so far for us that that's like his soft spot I just I don't know I don't know I just feel like overall it's kind of lacking 
And if this is supposed to be two parts, like I'm kind of glad, but also then why did they need to already have sex with each other by page like 150? If this was a two part book, I would have much rather had tension been built up over this one. And then like maybe right at the very end of this book, it's like they're finally like, we want to give in to each other and they hook up. And then it's like, oh my God, wait, maybe we do have feelings for each other. What are we going to do in the next book when it's like, ah, shit's hitting the fan. Not like a hundred pages in and they're starting to already engage with each other. Well, I'm definitely going to get back to reading because I want to read Luca's chapter because I want to see him and Matteo going ape shit, but <laughs> that's kind of what I'm looking forward to at this point. Okay, excuse the rain machine that you can hear in the background. I'm too lazy to climb over that side of the bed and turn it off right now. So I'm on page 166 and Maddox just said like, fuck, I can't fucking lose you. But like, why? Why can't you lose her? Like, I, I genuinely don't get it. I don't get why he's so like into her and I don't like she hasn't really made any indication that she's like I'm so into you but I truly don't understand like why he's to the point where he's like I can't lose you has she shown you something that you haven't felt in a while because you know like your dad was killed and maybe your uncle is a piece of shit like, is she showing you some kind of love that you're missing? Or I, I really don't know. She hasn't done much for you except sleep with you. So I don't know. I just, <laughs> I just don't get it. Oh my God, I just can't. And then like three pages later, he's like, tonight is the night that I betray my club and my life goal for her. In 169 pages, 169 pages, we went from seeing at the very beginning, through Maddox's point of view, him witnessing Luca killing his father, not just killing him, but like maiming him, torturing him, like ripping this dude apart where he said that his face wasn't even recognizable, and seeing all of like his brothers die when he was like five years old. And being like, I swear it will be my mission to bring down Luca one way or another. Like, that's his whole life goal. To now, 169 pages later, he's just... <laughs> Dorian, say hi, buddy! <laughs> Kitties are wild. They get the zoomies at night. Liter make it make sense. Make it make sense, because it doesn't. <laughs> I... This is like getting to be unfathomable for me. I just, okay, granted, I have no idea obviously where this book is going, but I just can't help but think if what if this whole time they're still like not giving in and he's still like fighting it and fighting to stay loyal and he's like, but there's something about her, but he's still like loyal to the MC. And then maybe at the very, very end, like if it ends in a cliffhanger and he were to be like, I have to save her, I would be like, holy shit, yes. Cause we would have built up to this moment, but it's been so quick that it just seems so illogical to me. Chapter 17 was easily the best chapter in this whole book because Luca and Matteo have arrived. I mean, we haven't seen much of them because granted they literally just stormed in to kill people. But also there's a part of this chapter is what gives me hope for the rest of this series. Ammo, is it ammo, ammo? I'm going with ammo because I don't know him coming in there with a bloody axe and how Marcella described him of how he looked like Luca and how death like flowed in his veins just like it did in hers but more dormant. He has me so excited for his book with Greta because we know this, we know this, that Luca is my main man. So I only want more of him. So if Ammo's similar to Luca and then we have like Remo and Luca on top of him, on top of that, and then also Greta, like to see Remo being like an overprotective dad with his daughter is just going to be so fucking good. That got me really excited. Um, also, I love Mateo. Mateo, thank you for making an appearance. There's something about Mateo. I feel like, you know, I got, I got, I got a lot of book boyfriends in this series. And while yes, Luca is my number one, followed by Remo, I do have to say that Mateo, like, just really. Mateo just really does it for me in a way that like is different than 
every other man in this book and I am just so happy to see him. Justice for him and Gianna because I did not like their story whatsoever in the anthology and I just want to go back to the time in their book in Bound by Hatred. That is like by far one of my favorite books in the Born and Blood Chronicles. It's a new day. I'm looking rough because I just got back from my parents house. I took my car over there. Yes. Oh, do you want to say hi? Oh, Mr. Dory wants to say hi. Anyways. Um, hey, no. Now Aria wants me to say hi. They are so cute. I took my car over to my parents' house to wash it because my dad has like a bunch of car wash stuff and I don't like sitting in car washes. It makes me uncomfy. So I'm back now and I did finish last night by Sin I Rise. So I finished it in one day. So overall, I ended up giving it a three and a half out of five because I did like it, but I was kind of let down in certain areas. So here's my like biggest plus of the book is Marcella. I think she is a great heroine. I think she is the perfect blend of Luca and Aria. And I think her character was very well written. And I think like even in the one scene in Mad Dog's room when she was like, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Is it like Vitello? That's how like I hear it when she's like Vitello's don't kneel. I was like, yes, bitch. Like she's just, it's so instilled in her to be this like powerful, cold woman. And I just love that. And then the scene when they're torturing Earl and some of the other MC people. And when she enters that room and like her speech about like being a woman and everything and her words in there and her strength and her poise and her elegance. Oh my God, she's just such the perfect blend of the two of those characters because I do really like them on their own. And I just think together, like seeing them morphed into one character is so, so well done. So she is, I think my biggest positive of this book. However, the biggest flop of this book is Maddox. He sucks. He is as bland as like uncooked, unseasoned chicken breast. Like he's so, he's so bland. He's so dry. He's so boring. There's literally no substance, no flavor to him whatsoever. And Marcella's character then in turn, I think really suffers for that because she's just, she doesn't have a good sparring partner. Here's the thing with this one is I couldn't help but compare it to Twisted Pride, Remo and Serafina's book in the Kimura Chronicles because it's kind of like same idea, you know, like a rival family is like, we're gonna kidnap the princess of this mafia family and take her and try to then in turn hurt the capos. So it's very similar to Twisted Pride in those circumstances. But this was just not as well done as Remo and Serafina's book. And first of all, I think the part of it being split up into two parts doesn't help it. I'll get to that in a second. But the main thing that I want to say about this is Remo and Serafina are so equally matched in character. Like they're not alike, but they're so like both well done and well fleshed out that, oh, sorry to anyone who doesn't like seeing me like touching my eyeballs. I'm pretty sure I've done, done this a couple times in recent vlogs and I'm sorry. If you've read that book, you know what I'm saying? When they're like on an equal playing field and they, they make such good sparring partners because of that, where Maddox and Marcella just are not. I don't know how Maddox got his nickname because he was never close to being a mad dog. Like we never saw anything from him except just blandness. I just, I find it so unfathomable that he is going to change his whole life mission after 170 pages that he's going to kill his brothers and like betray them all. And then at the end, him even like killing his uncle, like I get that his uncle went super far, like his uncle's, his uncle's a piece of shit. Like I don't care that his uncle is dead, but for him to make that turn, and I'm pretty sure Marcel even says like, I don't think he has the strength to kill his uncle, like back when they're at the house. And then he like kills him, whatever, 30 pages later. I don't know. Um, I just don't really buy it. And then the fact that he had the chance to kill Luca and he didn't, I'm just, it's too big of a leap. I'm not the writer of this very clearly, okay? But if this was me, I would have spent this entire book building up Marcella and Maddox in this tension and then at the very end have like Luca crash in here and leave it on a, uh, on a cliffhanger of like, is Maddox going to kill Luca? 
you know, like leave it there and where he has to make that choice. If we would have had 257 pages of that and like they wouldn't have hooked up yet, they wouldn't have been like, I love you yet. I think that would have made it so much more powerful. But the fact that it was so quick, so quick for him to abandon his whole life mission, like I, I couldn't get on board with it. I do think that like the, what I really did love about this book was being back with the family and being back with this group of characters that I truly do like love so much. That like every time Mateo's name got brought up, I felt giddy because I love Mateo so much. And like Luca's point of view chapter, I was like, give me more. Like I love those characters. And I think it's for that reason that I liked this more, where if this was a different author and a different universe and a completely new cast of characters, and this was like a brand new book, completely new to me, I don't think I would read book two. I think I would be like, mm, I don't really need to know how this wraps up. But because like I'm invested in these characters and I'm most invested in Ammo and Greta's story that's coming soon, I will obviously keep reading, but I think if it wasn't Cora Riley and if it wasn't her mafia characters, I don't think I'd keep going because this story I just don't feel was told as well. And I kind of feel similar to this one. At least this one had some more action in it where I thought Fragile Longing and Sweet Temptation had like basically no mafia business in it. It was just like characters who were in the mafia and it was like their home life romance where this at least had like mafia dealings or like motorcycle club dealings, I guess, which I did like, it was a little more action-y. However, the character development for me just was not there with it. And I'm like, honestly, pretty disappointed. I do still like it. Like I don't want it to come off as I don't like this book. even though I've spent like this whole time complaining about it, but I really do think the main reason why I liked it at all was because I was so excited to be back with these characters and because I liked Marcella. Everything else was kind of like, Nah. And oh my god, if Marcella's pregnant, I swear to god, what is it with Cora Riley and making sure everyone has a baby? Like, I think, I know that like she's a new mother, so I think like maybe that might be fresh on her mind. But for me, I do not need all of these people to have kids. I just, that's something I don't need in my books. I don't need to know if people become parents. And I get in this case, like, that they did have to have kids because this is, like, the next generation. But, like, this generation, I don't need to know if they have kids. Like, I genuinely don't need that. No, and I feel like this definitely could have been all one book. I don't really get why it has to be split up into two because this one was so short. It left on a cliffhanger of, like, oh my god, did Maddox run away? He's not running away. He's coming back. Like, we know this. We know this and it's just kind of annoying at this point that it was like left to being like, oh, is he gonna come back? Like, yeah, he's coming back, okay? There's no really ifs, ands, or buts about that. I don't know, guys. I feel kind of torn. If you've read this, let me know what you think. I'm finally gonna go back now that I've like done my own thing. I'm gonna go back and watch some of the other people's videos that I've been seeing that I've been like wanting to watch and see what they think and if they have like any similar kind of thoughts to me because I don't know, man. I was just kind of disappointed on this. Like I've kind of been with the last few because I didn't really like Twisted Cravings. I know people didn't like Twisted Hearts, Savio's book. I personally, I didn't, like it's not my favorite, but I liked it. Twisted Cravings was kind of a no from me. Sweet Temptation and Fragile Longing, they were both fine, but they just weren't the best. And I kind of feel that way about this one. Like it's fine. I, I enjoyed it for the most part, but like, like I said, if it wasn't Core Riley and if it wasn't in this universe, I genuinely don't think I'd be reading book two. Otherwise, I'm excited to see where Marcella's character goes in the second book, but she's really the only like beacon of hope I have for the second book. So if you've read this, let me know what you think, please down in the comments. Let's discuss or DM me on Instagram or on TikTok or whatever platform. I have those linked down below and let's chat about it. But otherwise, that's it for this video. So if you've made it to this point, thank you for watching and I will see you when I see you.